this content is going super viral on places like TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Okay, so these are, you know, those animals versus animals, kind of mythical. They can be, you know, polar bears versus tigers, even though I'm not sure how they would ever meet, but <laughs> kind of get the point, right? So, yeah, there's a lot of different ideas here. I mean, look at this a tiger versus a Tyrannosaurus Rex, right? Like, that, how would that even happen? But the point is that these are very easy to make, and these are actually AI generated as well. What's interesting is that the example I'm showing you doesn't have any sound. So the automation that I built actually has sound, which has been integrated into the final render. The first part of the automation is we need to create the scenes. So the scenes for each of the animals and the fighting, etc. The second part is we need to create the close-up images, as you saw in the demo video. The third part is then create the winning images. So if it's the elephant that's gonna win against the hyenas, then we need a winning scene of the elephant. And then the last thing, part of the automation is to basically put all these assets together, merge them, and then render the video using CreatorMate and upload it into YouTube. The first node you want is a schedule trigger node. And the second node is a Google Sheets. Okay, so this one is going to be a get rose. And this is the Google Sheet that I've created. So basically, I've just put in the main character, the opponent, status, final video, and you will see why I need these columns later, these 1.1, 1.2, etc. okay? Now, you can put anything in here, right? Like whatever animals you want, who, you know, the main character, etc. The only thing you need is a status. So I've got three statuses here to process, done, review, okay? And then the final video will go here. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling in the sheet, which is sheet one, and then I'm looking for the status to process. So ignore everything else, just look for to process. And you, you can return the first matching row as well. So when you run it, it'll, it'll only pick up the first row. If you have, let's say 10 items here that are to process, which you probably will if you're gonna go into production with this system, okay? So just test that and you'll get an output, something like this. Then the next node you want is a an AI agent. And this AI agent is basically gonna create a scene, okay? So you wanna connect it up to a chat module, obviously, so I'm using OpenAI's 4.1 GPT, which is fine. It's doing a great job and it's, you know, very affordable. It's also very quick. Then go inside of the AI agent. So we wanna define the prompt below and the main character is just gonna be the main character from the get characters sheet here. The second one is just gonna be opponent. And so we just grab that field over here and then drag it here, okay? Then you wanna require, require a specific output to be turned on and you want a system message, okay? So the system message is obviously the most important part of this operation. And basically what I'm saying is you are an AI agents to set up cinematic fight matchups. Mission, given a, a main character and, ca and a category of foes, list five distinct opponents who could credibly face off with them. Now I've just done five because I wanted to keep it short because I'm recording a video. Also, the more scenes you have, the longer it's gonna take to create the assets, but also render the video. Okay, so just factor that in. So no fluff, no backstory, just clean opponent names, one per scene, that's it. And then this is gonna be the output. And then we need a, an output parser, okay? So I've just used the structured output parser, which is the, the default one. And you wanna set up some JSON inside of here. Okay, so scene one, insert text, scene two, scene three, etc. All that means is that we're just gonna pass the variables that this creates, okay? Which is like this. So number one, you see spotted hyena matriarch. Number two is a kind of juvenile hyenas. Number three is lone male hyenas, so on and so forth. So basically all the scenes that you saw on the demo video. Once that's done, you want two set edit nodes here because we need to basically split the characters apart. Okay, so the first one is called main character. And then it's just basically elephant as the main character. And this is, I've given it that variable. Okay, I'm creating that variable. The same is true for opponents. If we go inside of here, it's an opponent, but this time it's an array, right? Because we've got five scenes. So it's basically a table. That's what array means. So what I need to do is I need to select the array as the object and then just put these five scenes in here, but then just drag and drop it, okay? So an array is done like this, it's a square bracket. And then you, you put it in this syntax here and you just drag and drop it for one for each scene. And you know it's worked because it's on this side here. You can see the output, okay? And that's it, just test the step. And then for the opponents, we need to split the characters because we've got five scenes, okay? So I've just put a split node in here. The field that we wanna split is obviously opponents and no other, no other fields included. So then when you test it, there's five items and they're called opponents, okay? And this just means that I can then process each opponent inside of the image generator and we can create images for each of them, okay? And what we wanna do is we want to merge the nodes, okay? So this is a merge node. All you wanna do is set it to combined and then just combine it by all possible co combinations, okay? So for this, we're gonna get the main character and we're gonna add the split characters, okay? You know it's worked because it's got two outputs here. The second part of the flow requires an AI agent, and this is gonna be used to create the close-up images. So create a node for this, we're gonna define it below. The prompt message is gonna be main 
and opponent and we just drag and drop these fields into here that's just the input and then we want to require a specific output and then the system message is going to be this here so you are an ai system built to create cinematic level photorealistic text prompts for high-end image generation tool just give it some parameters here and i've just been very specific in you know what i want these animals to look like and then the last thing is leave out all the story elements camera types and formatting instructions right i just want the output i don't want any kind of reasoning that goes on behind it and because we've got the specific output on we need to define these variables main close-up and opponent close-up which is why we have the output parser because then that will allow us to use those variables downstream later on when we create the assets so if you go inside of here it's just two fields the first one's called main close-up the second one's called opponent close-up and because of the prompt i've just said put in insert text this is placeholder as you can see that will actually just replace it right the la10 structure parser will just replace it with whatever's in here. Then the next node we need is a split node because we need to split the close-ups. So if we go inside of here, it just takes the output and then we don't want to include any of the fields and it just splits it as one item, one object. That just makes, that just makes sure that we can then use it. It's, it's just easier to manipulate later downstream. Once we have that, we can now generate the image. So this is a HTTP request node. We're going to use post and this is the URL. Okay, so this is a Pi API. I've actually used it before on a previous video and the endpoint is task. And I'll show you how to set that up. You want to include some headers. The first one is specify the headers using the fields below. The first parameter is x-api-key. And then you just want to put in your API key, okay? And this is what PyAPI is telling us in their API documentation. The second header is content type. Pay attention to the capitalization. And then the value is application JSON. Whenever you see content type, it's always going to be application JSON. Then send body needs to be toggled on. This is going to be JSON because we're always sending a payload, right? So whenever you send a payload, to the API, it's always JSON. Specify body is JSON. And then for this, I'm just gonna use the model Flux Chanel, okay? Because this is the cheapest model. It's very affordable. And my pro tip to you is just use the cheapest or even the free models at first while, you, while you're testing this, while you're building it. Once you're happy that the automation is working, then upgrade the model to the best model that you can afford, okay? Because then it's gonna give you the best possible output. Flux Pro is, in my opinion, the best image, text to image model that there is. I've tested a few of them, including Mid Journey. Flux Pro is amazing. Okay, Flux now is just a few models down, but it's a lot more affordable. And this is so that you're not basically burning through your credits, okay? Then the task type is te text to image because we've got a prompt. The prompt is whatever the prompt is from the previous node, which is output. And then for this, I've just done a, basically a portrait or, or square, 1024 by 1024, okay? If you want to know what dimensions are available, what I, aspect ratios are available just go over to pi api's documentation and just do a search for the api and it's got a whole list and tables and everything that you, you you would need okay when you run it you're going to see this output here now whenever you run a, a gen ai it's always going to take a few minutes okay so you want to add a wait node and for this i've just set it to 90 seconds so if you're not sure just head over to pi api that's basically a task and if you want to know where the api key is just go to settings api keys and then just you can either use a default key or you can generate a key here okay and this is the the key that you need in the previous node which is the generate image node run and then once it's done i mean when i ran it, it was pending but obviously it's been done since then we can now get the image so we need another http request node and let's let me show you how you set it up so now this is a get because we, we want to get it from pi api servers the endpoint is task but we need the image a task id and you'll get that from the previous node because it's got it here i just drag and drop that you know it's work because it's green and then for the send headers, we need the same headers again, but just the API key. We don't need the content type. So it's x dash API the key, and then put in the, the value of your API key. Once it's worked, you'll see the output here, and it's got everything that's come back. And so now the next thing we can do is we need to aggregate the images because we've got multiple images for the opponents. So we need to put it all together into one object because that's how we render the final image. The, the final widget, the, the final image, the sound, everything, we'll put it together into a video. So just get an aggregate node and we're gonna aggregate the fields and it's called data. It's this one here from the get images node. You wanna drag that over, put it here. That's all you need to do. And then once it's done, you'll see basically like an array. Okay, so you've got the first data, all the items, second one, third one, fourth one, etc. okay? So just think of it as like a table. And then the last node is basically an update sheet, which is update row. And what I've done is I've connected to the same sheet, the same viral animals sheet here, but now I'm updating these columns here because each scene will have multiple images, okay? And again, this is depending on how long you want the video. Just bear in mind, the longer the video, it's gonna take you longer to create it. It's gonna take longer to render it, but also it's gonna cost more because you're gonna need more images for the scene. So it's just bear that in mind cost versus quality. We're gonna map it manually and then just map all the individual images, okay? Now, it, it is tedious, 
But remember, you only have to do this once. This, and then all you have to do is just change the array number. So this one's zero, this one's one, two, three, four, and so on. And when you run it, you'll see that basically it's mapped and it's saved onto the, the Google Sheet because we're gonna need this later when we render the final video. Now we want to create the winning images. So again, select a node that is the AI agent, connect it up to ChatGPT or whatever language model that you're happy with. Let's go inside of here. So we're gonna define it below. Animal two is going to be the opponent for the winning animal, whatever that is. And then once that's done, we can then generate the winner. So if you open up a HTTP request node, we're gonna use Pi API for this again. The endpoint is task and the method is post. Again, we need the headers. You can actually just cop clone the previous you know, Pi API node, which is change a few things. So we've got the headers, which is x dash API dash key. And then you've got the value here and the content type is application JSON. And for the send body, it's going to be JSON again, because we're sending a payload. And then for this, I'm going to use Flux Chanel again. It's text to image. And the prompt is just going to be the output from the previous node. Very straightforward. Test that and you'll see five outputs because I've just given it five inputs in, in the initial kind of setting the scene prompt for the AI agent. Then once that's running, we're gonna need another wait node. So again, it's just 90 seconds because anything to do with Gen AI is gonna take a few minutes. If you're, again, if you're not sure, just head over to Pi API, go over to the task history and it will show you how long it takes. So this is when it was started. This is when it was finished and this is still processing. I think it's kind of an error on the systems. I'm not actually running anything at the moment, but if you go to the success ones, it will show you the start and the finish. And it's normally like text to image doesn't take long, right? The maximum you're ever going to see it is about 30 seconds. It's, it's very quick. If I was to go live into production, I wouldn't be paying attention to this. I won't be sat in front of this, right? I'd run it overnight or I'd run it three times a day or something like that, right? Then once this one, you'll see an output here. And then we, once we've waited, we can get the winner. So again, this is another HTTP request node. It's going to be get this. It's the same endpoint, but we just need the task ID. So you can get a task ID from the previous node, which is this one here, drag and drop it. You know it's work because it's green. And then this is a task ID. So we could get the actual, the image. And then for the send headers, it's the same again. We just need, but this time we just need the X API key because it's a get, it's not post. So we don't need to send the content type application JSON. This is just so we authenticate. Otherwise it will be publicly available. We can download any image from Pi API, right? So when you test it, you'll see all this output. More importantly, you'll see a URL, image URL. That's what we need, okay? And you can actually test this. So if you highlight this, go to the image here, you'll see it pop up. And then this is the, the winning URL right for the winning image. So this was the elephants versus hyena. And then we need to aggregate the winners again, it's quite similar to what we did before. So we just want to aggregate the individual fields. We'll grab the data field, which is data. That's it. Just run it. And then you'll see this output here. So it's basically going to put into an array. That's what this means here. You've got the square brackets. So that's the first row in the array, which is zero. Second row will be one two and so on. And then once we have that, we can then update the sheet. So I've got a Google Sheets update row node here. It's the same sheet. We're going to map it for the main character, which is matched with the main character from the first node. But this time we're just going to add the winner image URL. So it's just this URL here. Find it, this one here. You just drag and drop that here. Test it. If it's worked, you'll see this output, but more importantly, it's on your sheet. So if you go to the end, this is it. This is the same one. It's the same image. So now that we have all the images, both for the main character and the opponents, we can now render the final video. The next node you need is a merge elements node. And basically we're just going to combine everything. We've got the inputs from the winner as well. So there's only one input, right? Because there's only one winner, but the, the images will be lots of them because we have, well, at least the way I've done it is there's lots of you know, hyenas in the first example of fighting the elephants. So you want to merge the elements and the mode is combined. We're gonna do it by position and then number inputs is two. So once it's worked, you'll see it like this. Then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna get the elements, right? Because we saved them on the sheet. So now we can import everything. We can grab everything off the sheet. So you wanna get a Google Sheets node. We wanna get operation rows. It's the same sheet, obviously. We're gonna use the main character as the filter, which is elephant. And that's just to make sure that we're collecting the correct assets for the correct story, right? Because if you have a sheet like this, you're going to have lots of, you know, lots of content here, right? If you're going to go into production, you're going to build a TikTok or Instagram or YouTube shorts page, then you're going to, you're going to have, you're going to want to have lots of content here. So you just want to make sure that you're pulling in the correct content for the correct main characters. And now that we have all the elements, we can now render the video. So for this, we're going to use something called creator mate. I've actually covered this in a previous video. They give you like a thousand credits on the free trial. So there's plenty for you to test. And this is a, 
HTTP request node. We're going to use the post method. Here's the the actual API. The base is api.creativate.com forward slash version one. The endpoint is renders. And then we need to send the headers across. So toggle this on. We're going to specify the headers. So the first one is authorization. Bear in mind that, that there's, it's a capital A and it's authorization spelled in the American spelling. The value is bearer and then space and then your API key. Paste it here. And then we're going to send the body. So you just want to toggle this on. Obviously, since we're sending payload, it's always going to be JSON for both the content type and the body. And then this is the JSON that we need to send back to. So the template ID is whatever the template you've created. So for me, it, would, it was this one here, the viral shorts. And the template ID, you can either find it in the URL, which is here, this string, or you can go into the editor. And then it's this ID here. The music source, I've just grabbed it from a sound I found on the YouTube audio library, and I saved it into my Google Drive. If you are gonna save it onto a drive like Dropbox or Google Drive, just make sure that it's publicly shared so that the CreatorMate API can actually grab it. Then for the top image, you just grab the first one, the bottom image is going to be the second value and so on and so forth. The final image is just the, the winner's image. And so just bear that in mind. That's how you want to do it. And you can have as many as you want in here. I've just done it for three because it's like a 15 second video, right? But if you wanted a longer video, you just need more of these variables and just expand on this JSON. And you know it's worked because you've got it green on the right hand side, right? And then you'll see that it's pending, right? Or planned. I think the status is planned. That means it's, it's just doing it, right? If you're not sure or you think there's some problems, you can head over back to CreatorMate, go to the API logs and I'll show you. So a couple of times it failed for me, purely because I didn't have the status of the audio that I was using. It wasn't publicly shared inside of my Google Drive. So that's why it failed, right? But it will actually tell you this. If you go inside here, it's all done here. And then this is the video you can play here. So when it failed, it said the media file couldn't be downloaded to make sure that the file is publicly accessible, right? So this will show you if there's any errors. There shouldn't be any errors if you follow the steps that I'm showing you. And then again, we're going to need another wait node because it's Gen AI. This one's going to take a lot longer, right? So I've just put it in for 90 seconds because I'm recording a video. You probably might want to you know, increase it to anywhere between kind of two to seven minutes, right? And again, it depends on how many scenes you have, right? If you're going to have a 60 second video, then you're probably going to need it closer towards like the five, seven minute mark. But again, you can have a look at the API log and it'll actually show you how, how long it took. So wait for that to run and then you'll see all the outputs here on this side. And then we can get the final video. So this time it's a HTTP request node. It's a get method. And then all you need to do is just get the URL, right? Which is this one here. Just grab this, which is stored on CreatorMate's cloud. And then that's it. You don't need any headers or bodies or anything like that. You can play it if you want to see it here. So, so this is a video that I showed you, right? It's that same video that I showed you at the start of. So now that we have the video, we can now upload it into YouTube or whatever platform you decide. I, I decided on YouTube because I'm recording this video on YouTube. So you need a, a YouTube upload node. The operations obviously upload. For the title, I just took the, from the actual table, if you go to the first node, get characters, I just took the main character and the opponents. So this one is elephants versus elephant versus hyenas. That's what I've done, as you can see here, right? And for the region code, I set it to United States. Category is entertainment. Again, you would just set whatever is relevant for you. The import binary is going to be data because that's what the file is called. It's a binary type. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to add the final URL, the final video URL onto your Google Sheets. So add another Google Sheets node. This time it's going to be up update row. It's the same document, obviously. We're going to map the columns using the main character. So grab it from the first node in the flow. And this time we're going to change the status to done. Okay, so once it's done, then we want to change the status here and we want to upload the, we want to map the final URL into the final URL column on the sheet here. And that's about it. That's really all there is to this. You can have a lot of fun with this automation and you can connect up Instagram, TikTok. You can even repurpose the same video. So you can post the same video on all three platforms. So thanks very much if you made it this far. Give me a thumbs up on the video, like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on. And I'll see you when the